Method. That's what I'm talking about. And streaming live on the Mesin app. It all starts right now. MLB opening week presented by PNC Bank. Happy Easter, everyone. A little dreary, rather cool, and some severe weather, but hopefully well after the game expected in Cincinnati today. And the Nats, it could have been kind of severe had they not come back to win that game yesterday. Franny, so many different elements in that game, and it was one of the interesting things. The defense played a big part in it, and uh, just enough opportunistic stuff on offense. Well, you would like to say it was a clean baseball game just on the, the side of the defensive side, doing the little things on the offensive side, getting guys over, getting guys in. We got the sack fly right after the hit-by-pitch. They did so many things well. It was like one of those man you can't let this one slip away when the Reds have given you so much in, in that case but what a game and, and one that we already have seen that fight from this team that we expected a little bit towards the end of last year but it it shows a little bit now more well young teams have to fight and so do young pitchers so Jake Irvin this time a year ago not really on our radar that much now 24 big league starts later an established part of this rotation. Well any Oklahoman is on your radar we know that all right <laughs> but yeah Jake Irvin what he did last year how much he got better what did he do this offseason added a cutter he needed something he's got you know a fastball curveball with a little sinker on this thing but a little predictable at times first pitch he got crushed. That needed to be a neutralizer for him this year. And hopefully some defense behind him, like Patrick Corbin and company had yesterday. CJ to his right, Jesse Winker, a one hopper, perfect to home to throw out a base runner relatively early in the game. And then Cape Bear checked in with a caught ceiling as well against Ellie De La Cruz. What a day for the young Nets, including the kid who made his major league debut. The opening week presented by PNC Bank, brilliantly boring since 1865. And by your Washington, D.C. Honda dealers. Brought to you by your local Washington area Honda dealers. So along the banks of the Ohio here, the sun just came out. And you know when it happened? As soon as C.J. Abrams and Lane Thomas walked out of the dugout, here comes the sun. It's all right. So here we are on Easter Sunday, and we hope you're having a wonderful time with family and friends today. Maybe some entertainment by the guys at the top of the order. CJ all over the bases yesterday, walked three times, scored three times, stole second three times, being the uh, consummate 
leadoff guy yesterday Trey Lipscomb what a great major league debut with a steal of his own and a base hit and the Nets will take on 33 year old Nick Martinez now they have never faced him as a starter but seven times as a reliever over the 22 and 23 seasons with San Diego. Yeah I'll sing this kid's praises I mean 63 games last year nine starts ability to do so many different things came back from Japan pitching with a, a little bit more confidence having a change up. I mean this it's gonna be a test for the boys today going to be underway a minute late here 141 first pitch as Martinez rocks into his motion and C.J. Abrams pops it straight up out behind second Ellie De La Cruz. Well, let's check out his StatCast 3D powered by Google Cloud for Nick Martinez changeup is a heavy usage on it with the sinker curveball cutter four seamer. Look he's not going to overpower you 92 ish 93 you'll see sometimes but that changeup is absolutely filthy 47 percent whiff rate on it last year and if there was a guy that mimicked who I would be on the mound it would be him with a fidgety feet <laughs> 63 games nine starts for San Diego last year Lane Thomas is 0 for 5 career against him and Lane still hunting that first base hit so far 0 for 8 with a walk five strikeouts Adam Beck fifth year in the big leagues has the plate Ben May first base Dan Isonia the crew chief and then C.B. Buckner second and third Lane Thomas gets a big piece of this one out to left playing him toward the gap Spencer Steer two outs so yeah the defense for the Cincinnati Reds behind Nick Martinez with Spencer Steer in left field with Will Benson and Jake Fraley in the outfield to go along with him Candelario Ellie De La Cruz left side Jonathan India and Sess Christian Encarnacion strand over at first with Tyler Stevenson behind the plate Jesse Winkers had a good homecoming here three for eight an RBI a walk in this series Gerardo Parra grabs that one new ball club the added element of going back to a park where you broke in as a big leaguer so it's been a good weekend for Jesse and of course the amazing assist yesterday from left field well, we talked about it with him before game one which was it was nice having last year where you could get all the welcomings back and do all that and just have this year be a clean slate and just come back and kick butt he used a different word but you know we'll go with it well you just used it twice yeah well winker with the foul ball by the way Martinez evidently likes throwing all those pitches you talked about Franny last year opponents batting average 183 when he was a starter a lot higher than that as a reliever 273 and that fastball stays up to two Reds come out of the first two ball games with a 450 staff ERA Nets came out of this series so far hitting 254. Another base hit for Jesse Winker and as a net he's four for nine. Nice little day nice little weekend here for Jesse Winker. Two strike knock middle of the field. Thank you. Three nationals have four hits already now. Winker joins four for eight Joey Manessis and four for seven K. Bear Ruiz. Joey with an RBI this weekend. He's made contact in all but one at bat. And there's a loud single out to left center. Two out lightning here. Can Joey Gallo? cap it off and get the Nats on the board short compact let's hit Lina's everywhere Joey Manessis up and down quickly and the posture is perfect I mean this is vintage 2022 Joey Manessis that we got to see 110 off the bat let's go along with those 114 off the wall that they feel like they reconstructed today Joey Gallo Looking for that first base hit swings through the high heater six strikeouts in eight at bats he's faced Martinez once struck out in that appearance they give him left center Joey Gallo one of the few guys you'll see and most of them are power hitters where they play to pull infield and outfield right 
You don't see it that often anymore. Last season, Minnesota. Got to find a way to get the ball in play here with two outs. I mean, a 177 average and a 741 OPS. Because the average is not everything. It's a it, it's a part of the, like the diversity of a, a lineup. If you have a bunch of guys that hit 170, it's not good. But you have other guys that you control it. You could have a guy like him in there. But 741 OPS. That's ranking what? Third last year to Lane Thomas. Joey Menezes. Yeah, numbers on guys. With the Nats. Or second, sorry, would have ring second. Three consecutive off speed pitches, and he's ID'd all of them early to get the count full, and this helps. He gets Winker and Manessis on the move. We talked about a change up his number one pitch. Low batting average against it. 3 2, loves to go lefty, 28% change up last year. Runners go. Oh, <laughs> man, what a swing. These are the ones that you just wish you knew where it was going to end up. <laughs> it barreled up. <laughs> well, it could have ended up in the Ohio. I mean, we, we could play that, right? We could play that game. Does he go change up off that after he elevated? Might have been ball four. He got a piece of it down into the corner, and it'll play fair for Fraley. That's get a couple of two out hits and strand him. And Jake Urban will face the Reds for the third time in his career. Reds 14 runs, four homers, has a team hitting 294. Nick Martini stopped this guy. I think we would all drink to that. He's three for five with two homers and seven RBIs already. Did not start the game yesterday. Back in the DH slot where he hit a couple out of here on Thursday. So, Kyle, rather, uh, Jake Irvin, this time last year, right, right about to make his first of only five AAA starts before he would soon be a big leaguer. And there's history here. Bunch of the Reds mm. got to face him last year. Jonathan India, their leadoff guy, 0 for 3 against Jake. And off to a 3 for 8 start with a run batted in. Adam Beck calls it a strike. Yeah, Vir virtually the same spot as it was. Jake Irvin last year 
We saw so much good out of him with the fastball sinker curveball. Occasional change. JJ's got to lay back. He's got to bounce it over there. And Joey Gallo continues to play outstanding pick defense at first base. And they had some wicked top spin on it. Which one? The throw from CJ or the ball off the bat of? Well, the ball first off the bat. The ball off the bat. I mean, the read I thought was perfect from CJ, and then it just takes this nasty first hop. He backs up, uses his feet, and then a great job just to get it over. Keep it low. Give your guy a chance. Nice job, CJ. Nice job, Joey. First pitch curveball to the left-handed batter, Will Benson. That's have brought some defense here to Cincinnati. It's a ballpark where you have to play good defense. You cannot afford to give extra base runners here. Somebody hits a fly ball and you're down by two runs. That guy played good defense in his first big league game. Trey was great. Standard though for him. Pitch Arsenal for Jake Irvin. So we had for last season with the four seam fastball curveball sinker changeup. Four seamers trying to add up there. Now the cutter is going to be the big pitch that we're waiting to see it used in an actual regular season game. Some of the try to get those lefties off the middle part of the plate, not dive out there a little bit. Late break and a lot of drop. That was absolutely filthy for the hitter. And Jake Irvin, 100 career big league strikeouts. And the defense behind him with Jesse Winker in left field, Rosario in center, Lane Thomas in right, Lipscomb and Abrams left side with Garcia Jr. And Joey Gallo over on the right side with Gabriel Ruiz. Punch in the pitch gong. Christian Encarnacion Strand. Front door breaking ball of beauty. Small crowd. Quiet afternoon here. Really dreary all morning, and now it looks brilliant out here. Sun shining. Fastball away. K Bear tried to frame it up and back in. 1 1. Great American Ballpark opened up in 2003. Fastball to the outside edge. Great location. Dillon. I mean, the entire team was headed off the field. They all knew it was a strike before Adam Beck made the call. Irvin gets some defense from his shortstop and his first baseman. Then he takes care of the next two. Day offensively, defensively, showboating, love it with the big homer right there. Hit by pitch, bases loaded up. Tight ball game, yep. And he's an umpire, too. He had a great day umpiring. 
And then the throw out of Ellie De La Cruz over at second base on a stolen base attempt. What a day for Caber. And he's off to a four for seven start. One for three career in RBI a walk against Nick Martinez. First inning Martinez 17 pitches 12 strikes. By the way that was a 13 pitch eight strike first frame for. The Nats starter. Jake Irvin. Got over the top of that one and chops it down. Easy play on Carnacion Strand. Details from our friends at PNC Bank. So some player contracts. The Nats were not big spenders during the offseason. They were not expected to be. Joey Gallo, the one-year deal. Nick Senzel, unfortunately, on the IL already. And then Jesse Winker and Eddie Rosario make the team after their minor league deals. Yeah, two signing late on that. Right with Winker and Rosario making the team be contributors already. So for any I have a, a question for you. You make a ball club on a minor league deal. Obviously you make the team and then you're making major league money. Are you making the major league minimum or is there some no, renegotiation you, you, that takes place. No there? you sign you sign for a major league contract. It's a two way thing. So if you make the team you get that deal that you signed for. So I think for the case of Eddie Rosario seven million. Well that's way more than the minimum. Right. And he should. Right. Couple of career hits and a home run against Nick Martinez for the Nat center fielder. And this is three games in a row where he gets the start against a right handed pitcher. That's the first strikeout for Martinez who struck out 106 in 110 San Diego innings last year. San Diego. San Diego. San Diego innings. Padre innings. He was really good. <laughs> Here's Luis Garcia. Got his first knock yesterday. Double to right center. One out after the Cape Bert Ruiz home run. Yeah. That was off, Bob, by about five million. He's making two million with two million incentives. Okay. Eddie Rosario, yes. There's yeah. a rollover. Well, I don't know. Maybe he should have you as his agent. Jonathan India makes that play four in a row now for Martinez.
Jonathan is back to the mound here at Great American Ballpark. Jake had a great rookie season last year in some ways. Some really good starts, some off starts, but he made it through nearly a full season in the big leagues and then had a chance to kind of think about it all over the course of this off season. He told me yesterday that there were moments last year where he was maybe a little starstruck, moments where he's like, wow, I'm really doing this. I'm really living out my dream in the big leagues. This off season, he realized being a big leaguer is really, really cool, but there's a reason you're here, and that reason is to win games be competitive, make the playoffs, and win the World Series. So for him, going into year number two in the big leagues, he says it's kind of adjusting the mindset from, wow, I'm here, to, wow, this is really cool, but let, let's do this. It's game time. You talk to people around Jake, and they say, wow, he's an incredibly nice guy off the field. He's incredibly competitive when he steps on that mound. And he's just kind of, Bob, adjusting that mindset a little bit this year, not as starstruck and ready to get after it. Yep, and I told you that he has faced Cincinnati twice already. So here he is that second time around, Dan. They know him. He knows them. And this is where the veteran process starts happening. There's no surprise anymore. No sneaking up on anybody. Good fastball away into the screen from Jamer Candelario, who got his first Reds hit. Hitting right-handed a two-out fourth-inning solo homer yesterday. One and two. Breaking ball. Jamer stays with it. Into the screen. I, the things that we saw from Jake Irvin last year, more than anything. Was well, this guy's a tough dude? He doesn't care. Bad at bad outing or whatever. He's going to be the same guy, same human. Go work. Try to be better. Loves to compete. Not scared of, you know, the moment and who he's facing. Minnesota native, played college ball at Oklahoma, knows Kate Cavalli very well. There's a swing. That breaking ball's got some nasty hook and snap on it right now. Three strikeouts in a row, two swinging. Got some net stats for you here in a second. Oof, that's a big league hook. That is a big league. Hang with them if you're Jamer Candelario. That thing. Bottom dropping out of it. Jake Fraley, the right fielder, up the middle, and even the quick Abrams can't get to it. Reds have their first base hit. And Fraley's off to a three for five start. Penn Fitz got some stats for you. First pitch of at bat. Now you know why Fraley was hacking right there. And we got Penn Fed with great rates for everyone. Apply today at PennFed.org. And Franny, these are pretty typical numbers for any young pitcher feeling his way in. Yeah, I mean, you'd hope it wouldn't be that drastic, but I mean, the, the first pitch, let's go with that one. When you're a two-pitch pitcher and you're, that's what you're really going with, fastball, yes, one's a sinker, but fastball, curveball. Joey Gallo on. again! Look at that 3-6-1! The Nets' first double play of the year is spectacular. Reds are taking a look at the play at first. Ball got there in time. The inning is over. But Franny, Joey Gallo continues to impress at first base. Yeah, you can't get two without the first. And a perfect throw feed to C.J. Abrams. And a great job by Jake Irvin. You're not watching. You get over. Yeah, he beat Ellie over there. That's right. Yeah.
for their own room on the road. Maddie Lee Croy, former Nat player, now AAA manager, does as good of send-offs to the big leagues as anybody, and that's how Trey found out with Rochester in Syracuse the other day. Well, Maddie's a uh, showman. He Late is. call, yeah, he's a showman. So Trey goes one for four yesterday, steals a base, makes contact three out of four times, enough to bring the family back for another day, and why not? That was outstanding. And his defense, talked to Mike Rizzo this morning about that. Mike was so impressed with what he did at third. There's a deep bounce at a Candelario. Wow. And just got it there in time. Veteran who never panicked on that play, Jamer. I don't know how because his back foot completely comes out of him. And what a play by Jamer Candelario. Going back, but again, we saw this plenty last year with him. Watch as he retreats to go get it. The foot slips and he stays with it. And an unbelievable play by Jamer over at third base. Wow. Nats go two for nine first time through. And here's CJ Abrams popped up on the first pitch of the game. Ball got in on him in a hurry, and CB Buckner is going to call that a swing. Just how dynamic CJ is, just the disruptor that he can be. Doesn't need to do it always with the bat. We love it when he does. But just getting on base yesterday, proving how three stolen bases. Causing the chaos. And it was amazing. Working the count back even now. So the Nats and the Reds lead the National League with five steals each. But the Nats are five for five, Cincinnati five for seven. Ooh, good. Great pitch. And what a job by CJ to stay on that, not pull off and foul it off. I mean, perfect spot with the change. Nice job, CJ. Give yourself a chance. Get a get a mistake. In on the hands and fighting it off. Curveball cutter change. Four seamer change of cutter. Hitting's fun. Ooh, getting his <laughs> getting his licks in this at bat. I mean, so he's got a change up in perfect spot that CJ fouled off. Then he goes up and in with that fastball. Does he set it up for that 2 2 change up down and away, the one that he fouled off earlier? There's a high drive. <laughs> See you way later. Halfway up the seats and right. His first, number three for the Nets, and a one nothing lead. I didn't go change up. He went curveball, and hey -oh, that was a bomb. 107 off the bat of C.J. Abrams. And like the first pitch last year that we saw here at Great American Ballpark, same reaction. Look back at the boys. Let's go. There's Lane Thomas. And of course, he went right after CJ starting that game here last year. I mean, just an incredible at bat by CJ Abrams. Fouling off, not good pitch, great pitch after great pitch. Perfect locations. And I, I wouldn't even sit there and say that was a, a true mistake. It's a decent curveball, bottom of the zone. Career homer, number 21. Lane Thomas a chopper foul. 
That was some kind of sound. They heard that one over in Covington. Ball was heading their way. And the Nats have three long balls while giving up four. Lane Thomas hit the ball well. Left center, first time. Steer grabbed it. It's only 328 down the line, so left fielders play well off the line here. More toward the gap. And Lane Thomas will pop this one a mile high, short center. Benson on the way. Second out here in the third. Oh, we got to take, take a look at this right here. Tyler Stevenson set up down and in. I mean, he hit a spot. I don't think he was thinking it was going to do that. And for him to stay on it long enough. And he's wildly strong. Jesse Winker is next. Singled to the right of second base first time. I'd go watch video of that swing too. By the way, we missed it when it happened live, but I saw it later online last evening. When the Nats took the field yesterday for the bottom of the first inning. Jesse Winker stopped on his way to left field and gave a big hug to Trey Lipscomb to say hey buddy welcome to the big leagues I'm on defense with you and that was a neat little moment veteran guy acknowledging the kid I mean I had Barry Bonds do that no big deal my bad <laughs> no Barry Bonds said what was your name again no 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 he knew he knew he knew Bay Area, well, Bay Area kids. He he knew you then and especially after the game, after you went three for four in your debut. All no, right, it, it, look when when older guys doesn't matter, like even if it's a couple years older than you, right? Jesse Winker, right? Acknowledges. I mean, you're an all star. You have all this. You could. You're, you're worried about yourself trying to get ready. Jesse Winker on a pitch up and in, didn't move a whole lot, and that's okay. He didn't have much reaction time anyway. And the Nats have a two out base runner and Jesse Winker continues to get on. We thought he got hit by a pitch yesterday early in the game but they did call it a walk. But he's an on base guy. Yes he is. And the way Joey's swinging why not. No you look at Jesse Winker his entire career. I mean last year was a struggle we know that but a 320 on base percentage. He's I mean, pretty much been 100 points higher in his on base percentage and average his entire career. Well Joey Manessis is spring line drives all over the place right now. Really corked one in the left center first time today. Way inside. I did the off speed. Joey really seeing it well. He's five for nine. Has a run batted in. Last year, his hardest hit ball that he had was 111 off the bat. 114 yesterday, 110 today. So great with runners in scoring position last year. 61 hits. Yep. Hit 363. 381 against righties, which Franny did a great job of chronicling throughout the season how good he was against right handed batters and if it was a stat anymore like it used to be back in the 80s he had 15 game winning RBIs. Yeah it, it, the one that just blows my mind is if you look at runner runner third fewer than two he was 25 of 35 that's amazing. getting him in that's insane. That one got in on his hands and that'll keep it in the yard caught by steer but C.J. Abrams with one out his first homer of the year second hit of this series and that's a big fly in this ballpark number 21 career the Nats on top.
April 1st, not April Fool's, but April 1st at the Nationals home opener. First 20,000 fans will receive reversible bucket hat or presented by PenFed. Get here early. For all the opening day festivities, visit Nats.com slash opening day. Bottom of the third. And the battery froze there. They thought they had a strike. Adam Beck didn't see it that way. It's Irvin. 23rd pitch of the day to Spencer Steer, who's one for three against him. And the fastball misses away. Steer off to a two for seven, two RBI start. Wow. It's off. It's off. First one wasn't. First the one was right. the key one. The, la the last two have been uh, pitches off the plate. I, I, I think ultimately, yeah, that's a, you know, four pitch walk that you're going to get on. What we've seen, though, Kimber Ruiz and, and his ability right now, to he's starting to make things look a little bit better, right, as far as a ball's close. We're starting to see him work towards the middle part of himself every time he receives it. A lot of hard work he and Henry Blanco put on. Trying to steal some strikes here and there. Nick Martini already has one third of the home runs he had with the Reds last year in 29 games. Ball five. Three for five start. A couple of home runs. Last year, Jake against lefties. First couple of months. Pitching sort of defensively. He walked over 16% of the lefties he faced. But from June on, he cut that number nearly down by a third as it went from 16.2 to 8.7. Sometimes you just got to remember. And the as bad a, call was five pitches ago. He's got to as a pitcher, not let that affect him. You got to attack hitters. And if you're going to try to be too fine up here in the big leagues, they take it. They take their walks. There you go. Change it up. Really held on to that one too long. Three and one. Nick Martini's an Illinois guy from Crystal Lake. And he went to a school not known for baseball in the Big 12, Kansas State. But he became a conference player of the year there out of the Little Apple, Manhattan. 3 1. In there, inside edge. That was a great job by Kaber to keep it a strike. He didn't steal that one. It was a strike. Watch him get low underneath it. Work underneath. He can still be a little bit more patient to work just a slightly a second. You know what I mean? Do you want to go up and then back down? Steer three and two. Nobody out. Nats thought he was going to be running, and it looked like he was. So why not give it a try? Been pretty soft over at first base. We see a lot of guys kind of slipping around there, even on. You know, back picks, trying to steal bases. Runner goes. Ball four. Two on, nobody out. Down to the number nine hitter, their catcher, Tyler Stevenson. Especially getting the lead here, you just. See it been given up by the two walks early. How do you get out of that? Quick visit coming from Jim Hickey here. Got to get the strike one, but you got to know that people are going to be aggressive against you just in general. They showed last year. Jim Hickey been around for a long, long time. But the Nats have a couple of guys on their staff now who've really never coached full time at the big league level. Kind of interesting to watch what happens with guys like Sean Doolittle and Gerardo Parra. 
Davey had some interesting thoughts on those guys when I talked to him after the ball game last night. We'll share those as we go along. Guys who played at a high level and now coaching. And evidently Sean was kind of beside himself during the game yesterday. So many different things were going yeah. on with Patrick Corbin, then the bullpen. And he came to Davey after the game and said, how do you do this 162 times? And Gerardo Parr was having some of those same anxious thoughts about some of the position players and the hitters. And Davey said it's really interesting because when you're a player, Franny, you're taking care of your own right. game right. within the concept of the team. When you're coaching, especially with a team like this, you feel so responsible for all these young kids. And evidently, that was a real grinder yesterday for Sean and the Shark. And, well, uh, Davey said it's not like this every day. No, for but, sure. But, you know, there's a lot more of these coming up. But for coaches, if you care, that's what happens. You're tired. You're exhausted. And if you're not, you probably haven't done your job exactly. that day. Oh, two to Stevenson. And we've been we've been around plenty of people that are like that. That aren't prepared and, you know, they're just there because they're liked and all that stuff. You got guys that care and work and want a lot of things for these guys, these young Nats players. A couple of breaking balls on 0 2, now 2 2. Tried to paint. Jake last year, 121 innings, 54 walks, most of them in the first month and a half, and then 99 strikeouts. Three strikeouts, but two walks already here. He'll throw a strike and get a tap at a third. Lipscomb will do well just to get the play at first. He does. Playing it relaxed, no panic, just like the veteran, and it moves two runners up. Tyler Stevenson's just going to be like, I don't want to hit it to him anymore. End of the game yesterday. Gets the out right here. Nice job by Trey. Staying low with his glove. Watch him extend right here and stays through it. Beauty. And the arm, just a great arm strength from him. Accurate. Nice job by Trey. Jonathan India. Top spin grounder to Abrams leading off the bottom of the first. Thrown out by a step. That's playback early in the game. They'll trade an out for a run here if it's a ground ball, unless it's right back to the pitcher. And if you're the infield, just in general, why was that even a better play? I feel like for Trey Lipscomb is a lot of downtime right a lot of balls being thrown and you're not just really right. into it you got to stay in it locked in good nice. first step in reaction that's what they talk about guys around the plate their defense on the balls of their feet not their heels right that's why we talked about last year with the pitch clock it was very I felt like very easy to see guys were on their toes and moving all the time so there's the run they'll get and there's the grounder the Nets will get Abrams throws out India who gets his second run batted in tying this game. Nice job. It's all right. Take it. Will Benson struck out swinging first time. First cutter we've seen. Nice job right there. Top of the zone. You'll see it more 91 ish. Probably doesn't want to leave it more hard of the plate, wants to get in on the guys, but second time through. That just shows what that, that stat we had earlier about first time through, second time through, third time through. What can you introduce? And having that cutter coming second time through, there it is. A little wrinkle. This will put Cincinnati on top. Benson stayed back, hit the ball extremely hard. And 
they're going to have two runs on one hit so far in this inning. Both batters who walked have come around to score. Yeah, Jake just leaves this curveball, just kind of not as much snap to it, kind of rolls it in there a little bit, not trying to. That's how it came out of his hand. Just a bullet down the line by Will Benson. Encarnacion struck out looking first time. It was a running fastball right down the middle that kind of exploded on him. First base They're dugout. Call Bach. A lot of guys hollering back and evidently not a pause. Yeah, and well, and what they did too, this is a this is a called sign. Catcher's gonna throw his glove down, right? So the moment that the pitcher's just gonna be looking at home plate the whole time. And the moment that watch Kaber's glove is mitt, drop, boom. But the anticipation by that pitcher made him flinch a little bit. He was wondering when is Kaber going to do it? When is Kaber going to go? And he did it, and it was just the bad timing on it, and you get the buck. All right, still all that matters here is the pitcher batter matchup. Although Kaber calls a breaking ball in the dirt, going to have to block it. Fastball slips by him 1 1. Such a great play if you get the timing of it correct. Because when the pitcher is looking home as a as a base runner you're not expecting that guy to sneak in and him spin around but. Up and in. Big hole in the swing up there. So Jake Irvin walks two. They score both of those. We go top four. Middle innings upon us. Reds by a run and Joey Gallo will lead off. Baseball is brought to you by your Washington area Toyota dealers. Better availability means better deals at your Toyota dealer shop. Buy at Toyota.com. A little cloudy again here on the banks of the Ohio. Cincinnati. Reds are off to Philly for three after today. The Philadelphia Phillies, who came into today's game with a National League worst 10.50 ERA. And then Ronald Acuna Jr. added to that, right? Ozzy Albies. Or Ozzy Albies did the first inning of that game. Braves are 2 0. The Nats second in the division at 1 and 1. And that time Gallo reaching pops it up. Jamer, Candelario, one out. 
Spring is in the air and baseball is back. Check out the full national schedule of all the matchups, theme games, and giveaways online and get your tickets at Nats.com. Slash tickets, it starts here. 3 1 Braves, top of the fourth there. And speaking of opening day for the Nats, the unbeaten Pirates, who are 3 0. In the third, they trail at Miami 5 3. Kenzie Gore, lefty Marco Gonzalez, the principals tomorrow. This hitter jammed. So Gallo was reaching, Ruiz was fighting one off, and they both pop up to Jamer Candelario. We have a one hour Nets extra pregame for you tomorrow. So that'll be starting at 3 o'clock straight up. A lot of our fun festivities. Pageantry at Nationals Park. Yeah, get to work, Dan. <laughs> Dan works every day. I know. Sun's out, guns out down there. Getty Rosario struck out swinging on a ball in the dirt first time. It's not a getaway Sunday zone, is it? Well done, gentlemen. Looking good on Easter Sunday. Games out front. That's an interesting call. Rosario jumped back with right handed batters. Adam Beck's not been giving that location. But against the lefty under the hands, he did. Well, think about where he's standing. Right, he's on the inside part of the plate. Second straight time, Rosario strikes out. Martinez cruising now, five of his last six. By PNC Bank, brilliantly boring since 1865. And by American Standard, find your local independent American Standard Air dealer at MidAtlanticComfort.com. Bottom four, Jamer Candelario struck out swinging, leading off the second. Jake Irvin had to throw 26 pitches last inning after 22 combined his first two frames. Drops in the breaking ball, 1-1. One, one. Great pitch right yeah. on the hands of the lefty. Really the one that he threw earlier that just hung up a little bit to Will Benson, popped up a little bit on him. These have been coming out the last two, just straight out of his hands, same plane as that fastball. A beauty right there. Nice try by Caber to frame that one up. Hey. 
Two balls, two strikes. Candelario not fooled by it that time. Jake went to high school in the Minneapolis area. Thomas Jefferson High School in Bloomington. Twins drafted him out of high school. His hometown team. 37th round back in 15, but he decided to go to college. And he went to a showcase event in the Kansas City area, met the Oklahoma staff, fell in love with them, and then did his thing at OU and became a fourth rounder. Just getting a piece of it, Candelario. That one didn't feel good. I must say, pretty good choice by Jake. And at this level, he's got some familiarity, too. We talked about being Cade Cavalli's buddy and Brady Lindsley, Brady Lindsley, a Nationals fourth rounder four years ago, was their catcher in Norman, Oklahoma. This one straight out, right in his tracks. Eddie Rosario barely had to move. T Mobile customers get free MLB TV. Redeem now through tomorrow, April 1st. At T-Mobile.com slash MLB. So a great deal. And you have a day and a half left. <laughs> Loud base hit to right. Lane Thomas over to cut it. Gloves it. Comes up firing. Moving away from second base. And Fraley's two for two. He went up the middle first time. Yeah, and he goes first pitch cutter. Just doesn't bury it in far enough. So Franny, he's two for two, and he's seen two pitches. And then that last time up, De La Cruz hit the first pitch right to Joey Gallo, and the Nats turned that outstanding 3-6-1 double play. That's a beauty of a backdoor breaking ball. Came from nowhere back to the edge. Yeah, good job by Caber. Got to keep it a strike. He did. No swing. CB Buckner. It'll be interesting to watch Ellie De La Cruz in an entire big league season. 98 games last year made an amazing impact when he first came up. Electrifying. They were talking about him making the All-Star team. Mm -hmm. Cade Barrett, great pick. And then still trying to find an out at first base. Yeah, there's going to be a lot of growth from Ellie De La Cruz this year. Good player. Finished seventh in the rookie of the year voting. But David Bell put him in the sixth spot and keeping him there. Just I think it's such a big, big part of it for him. Runner goes. All I got to do is step off and throw now. Nice. Jake Irvin kept his wits about him and a two way too early break by Jake Fraley. Well, you got to time him out sometimes. A lot of these, a lot of pitchers just in general go by the UCLA whole timing. U, C, L, A. You're going to go. And we had the Max Scherzer hold on. <laughs> Still holding. Max used to practice his holds in the bullpen before a start. Good looking pitch, but no swing. But a great job by Jake not to panic, just step off. Instead of spinning, you spin, you got to go to first, but you step off. Go to second ID that CJ comes in there, throw a strike, make the tag. Right center, ball tailing away from Lane Thomas, uh -oh. and he can't get to it. Uh -oh. He got a piece of it. This will be three bags for De La Cruz. And he's at third with two outs. A cutter that he really doesn't get all of it. 96 off the bat. But he is running hard out of the box, and oh my, does he fly around there. 
missing it on the slide attempt. 11.8. Third base because he slowed up halfway through. 11.8 and he slowed up. It was like Usain <laughs> Bolt winning, the, you know, getting the uh, 100 meter record and he pulled up halfway. Now Steer will put them on top by two. Well, the Reds have the scouting report on Jake Irvin. Attack him early. They've had a handful of guys swing first pitch today. Yeah, a lot of the heart of the plate so far on the base hits. Nothing that has been great pitch base hit. It's been heart of the plate, middle part as far as height, belt high. Nick Martini walked and scored first time. When he homered twice on opening day, he was the first red to do it since Adam Dunn in 2007. Hits keep on coming. Thomas picks it up quickly, fires it in. That stops Steer at second. But now four consecutive base hits. Pass ball, no part of the plate, but down. This one at the knees. He is right in the hot hand right now. Stevenson, a bouncer to Lipscomb, first time. <laughs> Little short conversation between K. Beard and Adam Beck before heading to the mound. It's kind of odd too, because about what four steps onto the infield grass, he looked back towards Adam Beck. Well, second time around. And now. Deeper into the lineup. A real problem for Jake Irvin. Frame that one back two and zero. Oh. Such a different pitcher when he pitches ahead. Seven of the last eleven batters have been on base. I got away with one right there. Job. See, working towards the center part of his body is Caber Ruiz with that pullback. Yeah, scoreboard operator fooled. He had it three and zero. Oh. Now it's two and two. Scoreboard operator needs to stay in the lane. <laughs> Let the umpire. Let him umpire. <laughs> Overthrowing the heater there. Now this gives two runners a two out head start. Jesse Winker way far over into left center field gap over on Tyler Stevenson. To his left, Abrams on the run. A little double clutch there, but still had time to get the catcher running down the line. Reds pick up a run on the Daler Cruz. Triple the steer, base hit.
Three six zero Reds, one three zero Nats. Garcia, Lipscomb, Abrams, top of the fifth. Got to find a way to get on right here. Just need a leadoff man on. See what you can do from there. Nets have not enjoyed that luxury so far today. No coincidence that C.J. Abrams got aboard three times yesterday leading off innings. Scored two of those three times. Mm -hmm. Garcia rolled over a bouncer to Jonathan India first time right side. This one will go by India into right center. There we go. Lead off man on. First Nats knock since the Abrams homer on National Tater Day by the way. You got to swing it and roll it through. Nice little dance afterwards. Luis Garcia two for ten. Let's let's come big bouncer left side a lot of top spin. Jamer Candelario had to give with it. Threw him out by a step. So Trey one for five is a big league hitter. An element of speed as well in the number nine spot in front of C.J. Abrams. He's going to try to drop one into center and will. Two on, nobody out, and here comes the top of the order. Oh, the stack cast 38 homer on the eighth pitch, 107.1 off the bat, 429 feet. Wow. That was a laser. It's about 360 to the wall where that thing went out, and then it was halfway up the seats. Remember second last year? time in a row, or rather second time in three, he swung at the first pitch. Last year, for C.J. Habers, I mean, he just destroyed changeups too. So you wonder if he's going to sit one right here. Oh, I'm going to try to bunt for a hit. What a good play by Martinez. And then Encarnacion Strand will run it back in with Garcia rounding third. Do it all, CJ. Just play the game. a little closer to the line, Franny. Yeah, but you know what? Paint with big brushes. And he does right there. Great play by Nick Martinez. Hats off to him. He bounced off hard. Look at one step throw. Great play by him, but a great bunt, great sack. Now Lane's got to find a way to get one of these guys at least in at a minimum. Thomas Four will two. drop one. His first base hit. Scoring Garcia. Here comes Lipscomb. And Lane Thomas, first hit of the year, gets this one back even. Welcome to 2024, Lane. Tie it up with a two run. Single good read by Trey Lipscomb over at second base. Right off the bat. Nice job. Look at that. Compact. Stay middle of the field. Nice job by Lane. Trey had such a good one. Those are the moments as a runner you're like, I have this read perfect, but wait, wait, wait. did I do it too right? Because you're a young guy. You don't want to make a mistake, too. You saw a little hesitation as he started. And a running threat at first is Thomas, the 2020 man from last year. Jesse Winker having a good day and a good weekend. A base hit. He's been hit by a pitch. As a net, four for nine. And he's been on base six times this weekend. Oh, we got a hat tip CJ Abrams as well. For that bunt getting those guys over. Nice job. 
Off and running. Swing and a foul. The Nationals will host the Phillies the first weekend in April. Join us the 5th through the 7th for the first full weekend of home games at Nationals Park. Get your tickets now at Nats.com slash tickets. Thomas running again. Swing and a miss. Throw up. Runner safe. Wow, what a And slide. Lane stays on, too. Yeah, the ball beats him by a lot. He didn't have a great jump on this. But his left hand, as he goes to slide, Ellie De La Cruz swipes through, doesn't go just straight down. And watch the placement of the left hand. Nice job by Lane. Reg will challenge. I feel like you have to. A great pitch to throw on. I think, I think he's safe. The call on the field is safe at second base. Cincinnati is challenged. Foot staying on top of the base. I think it's too close. But see, that's the, the way you're going to see a lot of guys taking that throw. Ellie De La Cruz putting his left foot on top of the base. That's not blocking it. Right there, he is out. This should be a quick one. That was a great angle. It was just an initial, like, just we see Lane at first base take off with a lot of explosion towards second base. This one kind of stood up right as he took off. Well, if he gets caught, it would be the Nats' first caught stealing. Dan, I shown you the crew chief made the call. He's joined by the trail umpire over there, Ben May, first base. I think there's a little bit of they're going to look at this. Are, are they going over the replay as well and, and also looking and making sure that Ellie De La Cruz is not blocking the base? Is that a part of the rules of everything? They have to take that into account. I, I mean, right there, I feel like it shows that he gets them right on the bicep before the fingers touch. But as we're getting in uh, to the, what, two minute range, almost oh, they, three minutes, they're blatantly violating my one minute yeah. rule here. Yeah. Did she have a talk with him, Bob? They haven't asked my opinion. But I'll repeat what I said the other day. If it takes more than a minute, does that make it conclusive? If you can't decide in a minute, the call should stand. The other factor is we could be in queue. Yeah, I feel like with we see multiple games on there and they're replaying it. You know, there, there's a chance, Bob. Looks to me like Trey Turner's hitting for the Phillies right now. Yeah. Dan Isonia is waiting over there. Sorry, Dan, you're uh, fourth in line. Fourth in line. Here we go. After review, the call on the field stands. The runner is safe. Cincinnati loses their challenge. Well, how about that? A waste of time that benefits the Nats. And Lane Thomas is in scoring position. With just one out here. Is that might be the first break of the season. Ah, there are some angry umpires in the seats right now. I, I just you know, we didn't we never get the full review, but would love to know the reasoning it took so long. You know what I mean? Yeah. Either way. Because I'm on board with you on that one. I feel like there's a momentum and a rhythm that we've we've had in this game so far. It's been pretty decent. Yeah. To have it completely stopped. Yesterday the same thing happened to Patrick Corbin. One and two again to Jesse Winker. That ball just up and no swing.
That's a chance for a really big inning here. Still only one out. Only batter retired was bunting. You big bunting fan? Not bunting the ball, but the bunting on the grandstand. Yes. Oh yeah. Yeah, it's synonymous with opening day. I agree. And opening weekend and postseason. How long does it I mean, because it's like a Christmas tree. You gotta figure out how many days after opening day you keep it up. I think after the first home stand, you take it down. Then okay. you fold it carefully, hoping to unfurl it, the bunting, come October. Unless you're hosting an all-star game, then you can pull it out. Yeah, you can do it. Yeah, for sure. That one bounces in. Stevenson blocks it. Unless you want to bring it out for the Savannah Bananas. Ooh. How about that? They that would be yellow. That would be yellow bunting. Yeah, but they've been packing the place. How about those guys? It's amazing. It's fun. I wonder if Mikey Morse is playing for them at all this year. He has in the past. So has Colin Ballister, former net. 3-2 and Wicker is really giving a headache to Nick Martinez here in the fifth. You see Frenchy? Frenchy went in it. Jeff Francoeur. Yeah, I heard about that. Yeah. I think he was sore for about two weeks after trying to <laughs> trying to run. <laughs> But selling out Major League Stadiums, it's awesome. It's crazy. Jesse Winker, what, <laughs> what a plate it. appearance. He's on for the third time today. It's one that you, uh, an approach that you see from him, you hope resonates throughout the entire lineup. I mean, Joey Gallo will take his walks. We've heard it and we've seen with him. It's, there's no panic really is just a, he's no rush in his AB he's going to control it as he controls it and such a great spot for Jesse Winker and for you Nets fans who maybe weren't that familiar with Jesse coming into this season his eighth in the big leagues career on base percentage 370 mm -hmm. that's high for a guy who doesn't lead off or bat cleanup yeah. as a rule 813 OPS Five of his seven years previously here with Cincinnati. Stops in Seattle and Milwaukee. Just a pro. Big league flow, too. Dan Sonia just, I'm sure Jesse's asking about like the, the replay, honestly. Going, Dan, what, what's going on here? Why, why is it taking so long? You're yeah. freezing me? Are you trying to freeze me up there? Yeah, it, it's a factor for a pitcher and a hitter. Because that was, that was a long plate appearance. Well, here we are, the sixth plate appearance of the inning. And still only one Nats been retired. That was C.J. Abrams, who was given the sacrifice punt. Joey Manessis, base hit to left center. Fly ball to left. Ah, nice play. Good read on the carom. Yeah. Not as good as the Tampa Bay Rays down the right field line yesterday. Did you see that one? No, I didn't. Bullet and the ball boy on the protected the right field bullpen. Diving stop. Nice. Popped up perfect, flipped it in the stands like you've done it before. Look out. That's a screamer that'll end up on the lower concourse. Just slide out in front. Emilio Pagan. Start of the hands, kept it back. Ball one. Hey, one or two. Open throwing lane as well. Jesse Winker way off at first base. Christian Encar Encarnacion Strand, the first baseman standing behind him. But he started to creep up and getting a little fidgety with his feet. You wonder if they're trying to maybe bait him into a backdoor pick. Looked like a changeup, almost screwball action there. Really coming into the right handed batter. It kind of looks like they're pitching Joey into a ground ball to third. They've been jamming him with three of the first four pitches here. Yeah. 
And that one out over the plate for a strike. Couldn't react to the fastball. Two down. Only Martinez, third K of the day. Slowed him up the entire time, and then right at the knees, Tyler Stevenson did a great job to bring that one up. Did he steal it? I don't know. I think that was a strike. That was a perfect pitch. Yep. Great job by the catcher. All right, Joey Gallo's made contact twice today. Fly ball to right, pop up to third. And running to third, drawing a throw, and safe is Lane Thomas. So he matches steals with his two RBIs this inning. The trail runner, by the way, Winker stayed at first. Let's check it. Jesse, no eyes on Lane Thomas on that one. That's why the back run, backside runner stayed where he did. And a perfect slide. The Nats are seven for seven in the series. You know, you also wonder too with like a guy like Jesse Winker over at first base, the last few places that he has played in Seattle and in Milwaukee, not really a base stealing threat of a team, right? And coming here, it's a little different keeping your eyes that things change. Routines at first base. Joey Gallo selling out on 2 and 0 to take that big rip. Three and one. Wow. And that's a big man strike zone to say the least. I mean, that is awful. Joey really unhappy. That's a strike to the big kid who plays the post for Purdue, but not Joey Gallo. <laughs> Zach Eady. Gosh. That was an Edy strike, too. Well, if this guy connects, it'll be worth it. Yeah. 3 2 again, so Jesse Winker on the move at first. And Gallo will pop it straight up and pray it gets out of play. And it will by plenty. Nobody wanted a piece of that one coming no, down. No, no, high hang time on that one. Top of the zone with the four seamers. Gotten a few swings up there. You wonder at what point do they try to go to that curveball, to that, you know, to the changeup. Something down, try to get him to swing. 3 2 again. And this one playable straight up a mile. De La Cruz out, steer in. Shortstop called off. And the Nats will get a couple. Lane Thomas drives in two, steals two bags, and the Nats will strand a couple halfway through.
hard-fought rubber match of this three-game series. Case for Kids, from our friends at our Washington area Toyota dealerships. They donate $50 to the Children's Inn at the National Institutes of Health for every Nationals pitcher's strikeout. Jerick Irvin, uh, Irvin Ford today, the staff struck out eight yesterday and nine on opening day with Josiah fanning six. Something on the track out in right center. Lane Thomas will retrieve in a momentary pause here. Man of the people right there. Just Lane doing it all. Yeah, two hits, two steals, or rather two RBIs, two steals. And some pickup on Easter Sunday. India right at Abrams. One pitch, one out. Jonathan India has tried shortstop three times today without success, although one did result in an RBI. Yeah, I'm just going to move just so you can't get that love that you hit it right to me. I think we have a strike. It would have been a strike. Will Benson, RBI double last time. He gets a first pitch breaking ball here. Important inning, the shutdown inning for Annie. We always refer to it. His teammates just got him off the hook to tie the game. So yep. what does Jake do for them? Well, last time they got a run, what did he do? First two batters, he walked. So it's a good start. Couldn't bring the breaking ball around enough. That was a fun part watching Jake last year work is. He got better as the out started to happen, right? I mean, no outs. He got hit a little bit. Slugging percentage high. Yeah. Gallo diving, couldn't get it. Benson stopped by Lane Thomas. He's two for three. Another curveball. It stays up. Will Benson hammers this one. 101 off the bat. He's got a good swing going right now for. Robert Garcia, Nats lone lefty. Right now it's the right hander and Carnacion Strand. The switch hitter Candelario next. Front door breaking ball stays in. Good running fastball outside edge. Yeah, at some point too, you feel like Will Benz is going to take a shot, take a shot right at stealing a base. Being conscious of that, if you you are Jake Irvin, he is 0 for 1 against the Nats this weekend. Good hold. Nice. And that's how you change up the timing. Be able to sit there, not do the same things. Not everybody. Has that ability to, to be able to change up their pace. They don't feel like they can. Yeah, and Freddie, that, that within the context of the shorter clock mm -hmm. with runners on base this year. Right now it's down to three and two, and he lets it go. Hot shot, left side, Lipscomb, perfectly played. What? Garcia turns it. And the Nats have a couple of double plays today. What a job by Trey, staying low. Playing through it and, and just firing just right to the chest is all you got to do. Watch him split step. Go to your left. I got the snow cone. Great turn by Luis Garcia. Tie ball game. We're at threes.
Nat Club for early access to pre-sales, exclusive offers, and the latest Nats news. Visit natsnationals.com slash fan club to sign up for free. Yeah, Dad's on the promo. Got a little guy of his own now, Hank Thomas. Sounds like a ball player from day to me. Plains had a big sequence here in the middle of the game. New pitcher, Emilio Pagan. K. Bear Ruiz, first pitch swinging under it, out to Benson. K. Bear at 0 for 3 today. Pagan, a two hit, two run, seventh inning against the Nats on Thursday. Eddie Rosario got him for the homer. So these two will rematch right here. Yeah, forcing fastball cutter split and a curveball for Pagan. Clouds are gone for the moment and blazing sunshine here. 96 average on that heater. He's got good arm side run to his four seam. Cutter's bit was just dominant last year. 143 average against. No homers given up. The split was the one that got hit pretty good. Ball cutting in on Eddie's hands. Struck out twice today by Martinez, who threw 90 pitches in five innings. Six hits, three runs, a walk, three strikeouts. Nats box. Some contributions from the top to the bottom. That was huge when Garcia and Lipscomb singled back to back last inning, setting the table for the top of the order. And now Rosario frozen. He's down on strikes for the third time today. <sighs> all right. I mean, this is just a confusing day for all hitters, not just Nationals hitters, as that one. Not that close. Yep. Garcia got that thing started last inning. Luis first career at bat against Emilio Pagan. A little bit low. More on Luis. Here's Dan. Well, Bob, as you can see, Luis Garcia going by a different name this year. Luis Garcia Jr. I asked him why. He said there's two reasons. One, a little tribute to his dad who played in the big leagues. The other reason, he said there's just too many Luis Garcias in the major <laughs> leagues these days. He wanted to differentiate himself. The other ones are pitchers. Yeah. So, yeah, he had that going for him. Thank you, Dan Coco, the first. I like it. So I asked him why. Because <laughs> it's my name. Yeah. Love it. 2-2. Two -two. Garcia, after seeing all those pitches down, tries to get upstairs and never got up there. One, two, three for Pagan. We go bottom six in a 3 3 battle.
MLB Ballpark app will complete your next visit to Nationals Park. Buy and manage game tickets, redeem offers, and access exclusive content and much more. Download the MLB Ballpark app today. Nets into their bullpen now on this sunny, then cloudy, then sunny, then cloudy afternoon in the Queen City of Cincinnati, Kentucky, right across the river. Robert Garcia, second appearance on opening day. Robert was first in line after the four innings of Josiah Gray. He had an outstanding fifth inning, 11 pitches, nine strikes, couple of K's. When he got Fraley, De La Cruz, and Steer in order. This time he starts out with Jamer Candelario. Change up sliders, a four seamer that can get up 95, 96. You'll see sometimes, but very wide angle that he creates. Jake Irvin, five innings, 80 pitches, 46 strikes. His big regret will be the two walks. Other than that, pretty solid. Seven hits, scattered some of them, four strikeouts, and most notably the two double play balls. Yeah, I just I love the fact that he didn't give in. Could have let things kind of get out of hand, and he didn't. Great first outing of the year for him. And then soaking in what Jim Hickey has to say about his outing. Strike three call. Looks to me like he's calling it a strike, not a swing. Candelario might have held up, but the ball was close to the inside edge. I mean, it, that's a perfect pitch. You swing at that, you fell it off, that's off your shin. Yeah. Good take by Jamer. Adam Beck did not sink signal swing, so called third strike, and here's Fraley two for two. First pitch swinging both times. But that and against the lefty he takes. That wide angle that Robert Garcia releases from. So just, I mean, he is really the right center field part of where he's going to create create such a good angle yeah. in on right handers that you just feel like it's way off. And Franny, he's not exactly your crafty little lefty. Nope. He goes 6'4", 236. Mm -hmm. That's a wide body coming at you from that severe angle. Well, we talk about the fastballs from guys that stay on plane that are, you know, that, that have that look of rising at the top of the zone. Well, when you create an angle like he does from the left side, when you feel like you've got an idea of what the inside part of the plate is, and you're like, all right, that's way off. It's a ball. It's the angle he creates. And it's not. It's a strike. It just comes all over it. One and two now. Jammed him. And unlucky for Garcia. Jake Fraley is three for three. Fraley's off to a great start. He is five out of seven this weekend. The Reds box score. Interesting, the inning when they had four hits, they only scored one run. The inning when they had one hit, they scored two runs because of the walks to Steer and Martini leading off the third. Next up is Ellie De La Cruz, who tripled last time. That was right after Fraley was caught stealing by Jake Irvin on the two early break. There's a one hopper. Nats trying to make it three of them, but that guy's way too fast. Yep. Wow. That's a routine double play ball for 95% of the runners in the major leagues. Everyone did a great job. Watch Trey on this one. He knows the runner trying to get rid of it quickly. He does a strike and a great feed from Luis Garcia Jr. to first base. But Ellie De La Cruz, yeah, he's just yogging right there. Jeez, those strides. <laughs> hmm. Garcia has retired him twice in this series, though. No, obviously a running threat trying to get the scoring position for Spencer Steer. Not a big lead. We've seen Spencer Steer go a few times on the first pitch in this series so far. But with Ellie De La Cruz over at first base, you you would think he's going to try to give him one or two maybe to get on second base. 
It's something we used to talk about years and in some cases decades ago. The pressure and the approach on hitters who bat behind great base dealers mm -hmm. because sometimes they have to give up part of their approach to have their guy advance 90 feet. High towering foul ball. Down through the years, there were a lot of number two hitters who did not get the credit they deserved. The first one I really remember people talking about was Junior Gilliam behind Mari Wills yeah. with the old Dodgers. Yep. The Cardinals had Ted Sizemore and Kurt Flood behind Lou Brock. The way I looked at it, it was a way to stay out of the double play. Let him get to second. Yeah. And then, of course, as the years went by, Ricky Henderson showed up and other guys who had the power to go with the speed out of that leadoff spot. Check swing. That's by the mound. Abrams on the way. Too late. Play at third. Too late. Yeah, this is one that you're wondering what happened there with Robert Garcia because that ball looked like one that he would be able to get to. He just kind of just let it go. Thinking that CJ was going to be there, and Ellie De La Cruz was not stopping. Yeah. Speaking of Ricky Henderson, almost the fluorescent green glove that he's got was like Ricky Henderson. There might be a day when CJ Abrams has a little more experience when he takes a play like that and holds onto the ball and gets that guy at third. He'll be called off by Winker, and on one pitch, Garcia retires Martini, and we go to the seventh. As we head to the seventh inning, C.J. Abrams with a solo homer in the third. Lane Thomas, one for three, two RBI single and two bags. But this at bat from C.J. Abrams, a little curveball cutter, changeup. This is where this pitch right there, it's a two strike foul off. Another great one to foul off to get a mistake. If it is so much a mistake, it really isn't. It's a good pitch. He did a great job to stay back and launch that ball 170 miles an hour off the bat. For his first of the season. What an AB. Top seven. Buck Farmer. First appearance. Trey Lipscomb. First up. Breaking ball up in the zone. Farmer. Georgia guy. 33 years of age. Fastball slider change. Long time Tiger. And now third year with the Reds. 116 whip last year. That's low. Right handers 201 average against. Lefties 235. And that was by far the best walks and hits 
per innings pitched in his career. By far. That thing really diving on Trey. Georgia Tech guy. Tigers took him in the fifth round 11 years ago. He had been drafted twice before that. Trey Lipscomb, a good job of extending to keep alive on that breaking ball. Got a fastball. Oh, yeah. Rides it to right center. Benson back. Oh, no. And he took it off the yellow line. No. Let's call it CU. And it took a while. Later, wow. the Nats are on top. Trey's first as a big leaguer. Oh, my. Enjoy that one, Trey. Big hug from CJ Abrams on that fastball middle of the plate. And he goes right center field for an oppo first big league homer. What a beautiful swing. You made the mention to spoil that pitch before. Right, a good slider away. What? I'm glad Matty Lecroy gave him his own room on the road. Yeah. <laughs> Fastball in there, 0 and 2 to C.J. Abrams. So how about this? Today the Nats' leadoff guy and the Nats' number nine hitter have both homered. There's a kind of hush all over the park right now. Let's check out this home run. They're trying to go. Up and away. The run back. Look at his belt buckle pointing towards the right center field fence. No pull. And Will Benson. I mean, we. From here, it looked like he was all over it. Yeah, I, he was acting like he caught it. And I think he looked in his glove and couldn't believe that he didn't. That was kind of an odd play. Looked like the ball hit a cable on the way down, keeping Stevenson from prob possibly catching it. Wow. Go ahead. Homer in the seventh inning of a game. Second big league game. And a two for three day, by the way. So his first multi hit game. Just impressive. The Nats outscored the Reds two to one in the late innings despite losing on opening day. They outscored them five to two in winning yesterday. And now they've done that seventh inning thing again here in game three. I mean three hits brilliant defense. A stolen base yesterday. Oh, hot shot. India had to give with it a bit. No, the other thing too, Bob, is being a bait like an area kid, right? For from the DC area. You did this on the road, so there's not trying to chase that first at home, mm -hmm. right in front of family and friends and and everything. Get this stuff <laughs> done away with right now then you go home and you can have a fun time just go home and play ball yeah was yours home or road mine was home it was when you went three for four yeah. okay good for you but then you're you're chasing that you know after being at home it's like oh everybody's around you're lucky to have everybody around but you don't get in that that true routine until you get on that first road trip well, let's see if that base hit last time that knocked in two gets Lane Thomas going. Lane was 0 for 10 to start the season. So steady, so great. First two thirds of last year. He gets jammed. Candelari on the backhand. Close. Lane Thomas giving his manager a hard 90 right there. Any glitch, he would have been safe. Number six, Jesse Wood. 
two outs. Jesse Winker all over the bases today is next. A single hit by a pitch and a walk. Oh. Lifting one out to right center trying to plug the gap. That's going to take one hop into that guy's left hand. For a two out double. Jesse Winker have a weekend. Welcome to the Nats. Well first pitch slider. He's now five for ten Franny and he's been on base seven times in three games. It's just it, the cool two hand finish too. You don't see. A lot of guys with the two hand high finish. Great sound off that bat right there. And just a zoo out there by the fan. He's right in the bread basket. Yeah, that ball's got to be caught yep. on a hop. Breaking ball away to Joey Manessis. Nats by a run. Huge two out opportunity sitting out there at second. Look out up and in nowhere to go. Can. So it's Joey Gallo's turn. Got a little the pad. Yeah got him on the guard that's good. Hey, you could understand. I'm not saying they were trying. I wasn't trying to throw at him, but try to crowd Joey Manessas, who has been hammering mm -hmm. balls out over the middle of the part of the plate, trying to get in on him. Well, his last at bat in the fifth, Martinez jammed the heck out of him the entire AB. Gallo, three fly balls, two to the outfield, 0 for 3. 0 for 11 as a net. No bit of Joey felt comfortable taking that one going ball or strike. <laughs> Trying to bend those knees and get to that one. Yeah, good. Change up by Buck Farmer. Joey's first 12 plate appearances 0 for 11 with a walk. He's probably seen as many pitches as anybody in the lineup. Been a lot of long counts. Up and in. That's always been an MO for him. The pitches per plate appearance always one of the highest in the game. Joey Gallo stand calm takes the walk loads them up for K Bear Ruiz. Second walk given to the Nats today. Looks like Derek Johnson's on the way for a visit with K Bear Ruiz coming up. K Bear just to set it up a walk 0 for 2 career against Buck Farmer. How good. Was Kevin Ruiz last year? Runners in scoring position, 365, almost a thousand OPS. Evidently, they uh, got the home run ball. Is there nacho cheese on there? Thank there... you, Cincinnati Reds. <laughs> that would add character to it. Yeah. I don't know. You hit it so hard, it might have barbecue sauce on it. There you go. That thing was tattooed the other way. But the spots that Kabert is thrived in you know two outs 281 last year Rivers in scoring position three for seven with the bases loaded he loves these moments because he's willing to use the middle part of the field not try to get too big with it first pitch swinging last time hit a fly ball to center leading off in the sixth K Barrett came up big two at bats in a row to help the boys win yesterday taking 
Even though not caught cleanly it's a called strike. Right there got his feet moving too up and in. Almost feel as a hitter and in. And, and People that watch the game enough, you watch the guy's feet move. Do they set up a changeup down and away? We saw one against Joey Gallo. There it is. You know, you, that's all you need. You talk about guys, you know, that, that talk pitching all the time. That talk about just moving the feet enough. You can see it move, and what that does. So good execution on their part, Tyler Stevenson and Buck Farmer. Winker at third, Manesh at second, Gallo at first. Keep it Ruiz leans back ball two. That is TJ Antone. Keep Bear Ruiz. It was the same. Talk about spoiling a pitch. Right. And that was the same sequence. Right. Fastball in to change up down and away. Ch fastball in. Up and in to change up down and away. Good job by Kabert. Way out of here and way foul. Look out upstairs. And this is where the moment they probably double up, right? Because now they've gone fastballs up multiple times in this at bat. Did he catch Tyler Stevenson in the helmet with he the bat? He did. He did. And then K. Baird put his hand back. And I'm sorry. Oh my. I thought the ball was going to hit him while he was swinging. The Nats will strand three, eight on the day, but Trey Lipscomb is starting to own the day again here. First major league home run, and he goes the other way, just out of the reach of Benson. Family loves it. Four, three, Nats, time to stretch. Stretch here in Cincinnati. It's time now for a PNC MLB update. Tools and technology that help make it simpler to manage your finances. PNC Bank, helping to make a difference. 
Braves still a chance to sweep the Phillies to open their season, but the Phillies stormed back in the bottom of the seventh inning. They scored three runs. Trey Turner tied the game, then Alec Bohm just moments ago, a two-run single to put the Phillies on top as they lead five to three. The Pirates trailed the Marlins pretty much the entire ball game today. A Jazz Chisholm grand slam early in the game gave Miami a big lead, but the Pirates have just kind of chipped away. And now after a rowdy Tellez three-run homer, they have a 7-6 lead over the Marlins and a chance to open the season 4-0 while dropping Miami to 0-4. The Mets have a chance to be swept if they don't come back in the late innings against Milwaukee, who leads them 4-1. And the Angels, after being absolutely dominated in the first two games of their season, prompting reportedly a Ron Washington team meeting after game number two. They have a 4-1 to lead over the Orioles in Baltimore today, Bob. Crazy, crazy first weekend, Dan. Thanks for the update. And here in Cincinnati, 4-3 Nets. Dylan Floro will make his second Washington appearance. One hit, one strikeout, 12 pitches, a scoreless sixth inning for this veteran righty on opening day. Yeah, you saw that 62 games last year between Miami and Minnesota. Nine holes a four seven six fastball sinker slider and a change sinker slider four seamer to righties four seamer change up. Occasional sinker and slider to the lefties. Last year lefties hit him pretty good so you look at where they are in this pocket some right handers to face. He got Stevenson out the other day who's now three for five against him. Reds continue to drop in some bloops here and there and they'll lead off man's aboard in the seventh. And definitely not one that you're going to say he Eddie Rosario should get that one. But if there was one more batter Eddie Rosario who is on deck leading off next inning you would think that Victor Robles would be in center field in a one run lead. Top of the order Jonathan India. Two grounders to short, a liner to short 0 for 3, but an RBI. You wonder if on this one they do a little bit of a hold as Bubba Thompson gets out there to pinch run. To see if he shows anything. Started, then stopped. Bubba Thompson stole a bag yesterday. There he goes. Pitch out. It's on target. Great throw. Safe is the call. Ooh. Cade Bert Ruiz, one of his best throws. That's checking it out in the dugout and the clubhouse, and they will challenge. Ooh, we got our first one. Good jump right here by Bubba Thompson, but the quick release, that. strong throw. Call on the field is safe at second. Washington is challenged. You know, he might have got in right there. This is a good one to challenge, though. Got to take your chance. Yeah, he's in there. It was close, though. You have to take the chance. But the throw from Caper Ruiz off the one knee, you could see him work it his, his way through. So right knee down, left leg up, able to position his body, cheating away to create that throwing lane. Yeah, certainly looks safe. But Cincinnati challenged Lane Thomas back in the fifth. And everybody in the ballpark thought he was out and it was called a steal. It just doesn't seem like it should take this long. This one won't. After review, the call on the field is confirmed. The runner is safe. Confirmed. Washington loses her challenge. Well, late in the game, they took a shot. I like it. You have to. Both managers have speed to burn on their rosters, and it's been a big factor in this series. 2 and 0 the count, by the way. And in India, I don't think he would have minded had that ball hit him. He didn't move. Oh, 
Two on, nobody out. That's really not that close as far as hitting them. <laughs> that was a good pitch. Decent pitch. So this is where you like, I mean, just for the fact that you come from swing training, you've had the bunt plays worked on quite a bit. You know them, you understand them. And it's right into this. Are they going to let Will Benson? Most there's some managers that obviously will let their guy have a pitch, do something on that first pitch. If not, we'll lay it down. Floro struck out Benson swinging Thursday, missing low. Same pitch, ball two. It just auto take you right out of hand. For Benson. Perfect pitch. 2 0, knees at the corner, away. Match that one up again. Back even now, 2 2. Almost there. Back doors, especially with Joey Gallo at first base now. Swing and a miss. Dylan Floral strikes out Benson for the second time this weekend. And a huge first down. What a great job, Dylan Floro. Walks Jonathan India four pitches. Goes 2-0 to Will Benson in three straight perfect pitches. First time Encarnacion Strand and Floro will match up. Under the hands on the edge. That is off the plate in. You get one finally. It's all right. <laughs> to third, to oh, second, man. to first, and the Nats have done it again. Three double play balls on the day. And this one to the eighth with the Young Nationals still on top in Cincinnati. By Visit Annapolis. The Annapolis Film Festival is April 4th through the 7th. Plan at 
Visit Annapolis.org. Big time defense by the Nationals in this season opening series. New pitcher T.J. Antone. Leadoff man Eddie Rosario. Breaking ball Frisbee's in to get ahead. Antone last year five games one hold one five nine. See a strikeout stuff opponents batting average very little. Curveball fastball. How well placed is that going the other way. Eddie Rosario will make the turn after striking out three times. Stays compact and shoots a double the other way. Man, there's nothing better. First pitch breaker, and then you get a second one. It goes down there in the zone. A little load, but look at how short and compact. Quickly gets that barrel through the hitting zone. Nice job by Eddie. Eddie Rosario now three for 11, isn't it? It's a great salvage when you. Been punched out three times. There's Garcia. Luis one for three with a run. By the way, the Rosario was one of only two Nats who ever faced this guy before. One for two now. Lane Thomas the other. Well, I think we know from watching years past, he can hit. <laughs> it's nice to have it on this side. It is. And Luis Garcia turned loose on three and other. I like it. Because the only thing he's going to try to do is pull it. That's what you want him to do at least get him over ground balls fine. <laughs> so is a walk now he can just walk down to first two on nobody out. What does Trey Lipscomb on his second day in the big leagues have in store for us this time. I mean he's fast. You would think he's a good bunter. We he's haven't just seen out of much college. of that. He's just out of college. He's a good bunter for sure. <laughs> like if you go to college I don't care if you're at Tennessee where they launch. They know how to bunt. Well, I'd love it here. Put some pressure on these guys. Squares early, leans back, ball one. The only out he's made today was on a good play by Candelario down a third. A big thing right here. If he does square to bunt, got to bring in Jamber Candelario if you go third base side. You get him to bite in. Eddie Rosario goes over there. You get your job done. Luke Maley, by the way, batting ninth. Now their catcher after they ran for Stevenson. Way upstairs. They had the wheel play going on. Nice job. Good ID right there from. Trey Lipscomb will play. Shortstop starts it once he starts going fast towards third base. Pitcher throws it. And trying to get the lead runner on that. All the pressure now on Antone and his infield. No sign of squaring, and it's three and zero. Oh. Mm -hmm. Well, here's the wheel play. Shortstop will start it. In this case, his second baseman starts it as he goes. No show. Bases loaded, nobody out, and Trey Lipkins is on base again. David Bell on his way to the mound. I don't think he's seeing any command from his right hander here. Left handed CJ Abrams is next. Looks like they're going to go to the right hander, Fernando Cruz. Very brief outing for TJ Antone. That's got a run on a hit. 
against Cruz yesterday. The top of the eighth. This at bat with Cruz facing Abrams. So big. Bases loaded, nobody out. CJ, by the way, with a triple. Two for three career against him. And he takes strike one. I mean, they brought in their best strikeout guy last year for the Reds. 35% of the guys that he faced, he punched out. That split is such a good pitch for him. Well, he almost duplicated the triple down the right field side with that swing after doing it yesterday. Came home on a wild pitch. So, Eddie Rosario led off the inning with the opposite field double. Garcia took the base on balls, swinging on 3 and 0 oh at one point. Lipscomb wanted to bunt. He took the walk. And now CJ Abrams on a ball diving cannot make contact. And that is what the manager David Bell he just sold out for was I got to get my best guy in there. I got to get my guy to get strikeouts. Fernando Cruz delivers on three pitches. Just a nasty split. Struck out Lane Thomas yesterday. And nearly another wild pitch for a run. A great job by Luke Maley. Backup catcher coming into the game. There's nice tester. You know, wide base. Just everything. So Lane Thomas 0 for 4 career against Cruz three strikeouts. He's already driven in two today. And this is a spot that he struggled in last year. While cutting away 2 and 0. It was him and Austin Riley two guys that were 0 for 11. 0 for 22 Can you imagine. With the seasons they both yeah. had. Thomas gets under it. That works. The runner at third is Rosario. Some momentum for Benson. Here comes the runner. Here comes the throw. The Nats have an add on run to go up 5 3. And Lane Thomas has a three RBI day. And that works. Get and everybody, done. everybody moved up, Franny. Elevated, get it deep enough, and everybody base running with eyes on the front runner. And nice job by Lane Thomas. I take it back. He was 0 for 11, and then went two for his last four last year. My apologies. Okay. So, we got so he's trending that. well. He's trending so well. <laughs> but that's, I mean, that's getting the job done, fighting right. away. And now Jesse Winker, who's been a major. Thorn in the red side today for sure and all weekend gets a chance to double the Nats lead. They're going to appeal at third. And CB Buckner says Eddie Rosario did not leave too early. The opportunistic Nats.
Winker two for two today also hit by a pitch and a walk. Ball one but this I mean just in general from Lane Thomas when you're over three against a guy with three punch outs you know the splits coming you know that that is a big deal you get a heater you don't miss it. How do you how do you not hit the split you don't you just go after the fastball like he did Winker with pace and Carnacion strand but the Nats have added a run 5 3 to the bottom of the eighth. Twenty twenty four. It'll be Friday, April five against the Phils. Check out Nats.com slash pups for more information. Bring your furry best friend to enjoy Nationals baseball. All right, Hunter Harvey right back on the horse today. A rough outing yesterday, a couple of hits, a couple of runs, a walk in the eighth inning. Nats had some heroics in mind in the top of the night. Twenty two pitches, 15 strikes. And Franny if he can go back to back and get the job done here that's huge for the Nets. It's huge for the Nets. Also huge for Hunter Harvey. Just so you know you don't want that first out to be like that. Maybe one bad pitch Nick Martini. First pitch just misses away to Candelario. You'll see this a lot. Eddie Rosario moves to left. Because Victor Robles is in center field. Candelario walked and scored against Hunter yesterday and he was all in on 2 0 there. So the thing that we saw from Hunter yesterday was just relying on that split a little bit when that fastball was so explosive. I mean just again you see it right there top of the zone 2 0 then top of the zone and just a half swing just did, the ball has so much ride. Staying up playing so well that the, the hitters have trouble some time just timing it up. So he's got it back to 2 2 here. Three, four, five for the Reds with Fraley and De La Cruz to follow. Harvey throws a strike high in the air. Right center. The ballpark holds it, but Lane Thomas can't catch it. High off the wall, and Candelario cruises into second. Hopefully, Lane's all right. He landed awkward. He times that one up good, and then you see Lane just undershot it. Yeah, looked like he was there in plenty of time. Here's Fraley. 
one for one career against Hunter. That's three out of four times today he has been hacking on the first pitch. And it's turned out well for him. He's three for three. Oh, that run in the top of this inning so big. Right now it's a matter of getting outs. Oh the setup in this at bat so far split down fastball up 0 2 count. Almost like where he was with Nick Martini yesterday. Bouncer Gallo has it. It'll advance the runner. But a very important first out. For Hunter Harvey here in the eighth. And Bob maybe one that. In your scorebook that you might note down I mean just. Joey Gallo slips a little bit too. First base been pretty slippery over there as far as loose loose dirt. You've and seen it all day and he just stayed with it nicely. I know it's not going to go down as like oh it's such a great play. It's <laughs> no panic. Nice job by Joey. De La Cruz one for three with a triple. Harvey struck him out yesterday. Ellie 0 for 2 against Hunter. Good jamage right there, one and two. How about on that force out, Bob? Ellie De La Cruz covered the, his speed was at 31.1 feet per second. <laughs> So that's under three seconds to first base. No, I'm just saying, like, just the, the, how they have the sprint speed yeah, on it. Yeah, yeah. When he, and was he got up to 31-1 and you're full like, flight. Come on. That's crazy. What's to be that big and to be able to get going that that fast, so quickly out of the box? One ball, two strikes. Harvey gets him <laughs> down and in, and with a runner at third, two outs now. What a pitch right here, the split. Digs in deep, and that thing cuts on him a little bit, and it's just a beauty. Below the strike zone, not going to have any damage on that because, well, it's just not a contact pitch. Nice job by Hunter Harvey, yet again. Harvey got steer on a ground ball to third yesterday. Spencer 0 for 2 against our right hander. Fastball. Oh, he's going to get it. Outside edge. This is this is a lot on Jamer too. Or Jamer on Caber. Sound the same. But the way he's working back to the middle part of his body when he's catching, and I say that by his receiving, it's helping out that umpire call to strike. Where do they go on 0-2? They go breaking ball away. Two hopper. Lipscomb. Low throw. Great job. Joey Gallo does it again at first base. Lead off double, runner at third, one out, and Hunter Harvey calmly gets three reds in a row. The Nats looking to win a series by two into the ninth.
is bright, as you can see in Trey Lipscomb. Follow at Nats underscore player dev on X and Twitter for the latest news and highlights of the top prospects and rising stars in the Washington Nationals player development system. You know, there was a long, long time ago in the district where we heard a coach say the future is now. George Allen of the then Redskins. To him, the future is now. And to a certain extent, we're seeing a little bit of that with these young guys this weekend. Another appearance for Lucas Sims, who the Nats got for a run on two hits in the eighth inning yesterday. He gave up the K Bert home run. Look out right below us. Franny took his jab step, but decided not to dive, and I'm glad you did. Yeah, no, I chose life over anything. Joey Manessis went for three, hit by a pitch last time. Did he stop? Yes, he did, says Ben May. Reds like their Georgia pitchers, don't they? <laughs> they got a few. But former Lucas Sims. Lucas Sims, slider, four seamer, and a curveball. Off the end of the bat. Joey will muscle at about 370 to center. Catch Nationals baseball anytime, anywhere on the Mass and App. Live game action, expert analysis. Mark Zuckerman, Bobby Blanco, Amy Jennings, player stats, and Dan Coco, too. It's all in the palm of your hand. Don't miss a pitch. Go to MassinSports.com and download yours today. Joey Gallo 0 for 3 with a walk. And two more outstanding picks at first base today. If you don't have your best stuff at the plate, you're not you're struggling. There's more to the game. He is delivered over at first base. My goodness. I would say very easy, you know, for Adam Adam LaRoche to, to do picks with me. You know, good arm, not great. Yeah, not going to go crazy. But with guys that see velocity across the diamond, the ball skips different. The ball just stays low. You just have no idea where it's going to go. And he's been patient and relaxed over there at first base. Another one off the end out to center. And with two outs, it'll be Cape Bert Ruiz. Who's two for three after his homer against Sims yesterday? Kyle Finnegan about to begin again, trying to make it two in a row. Good first weekend by you, Bob. Picking up what you land down. <laughs> hey, the guys are playing good baseball. It's been fun to watch. Opening day a little rough. Reds did everything right opening day, stealing bases, hitting home runs. But the Nats have played better defense and better fundamental baseball this week than Cincinnati. Now, having said that, three tough outs to get. It's eight, nine, and one. But there's always something about that ninth inning on a Sunday afternoon. He had no shot, and some guys can outrun the baseball. Wow. Kyle Finnegan, three outs to get after that whip, Jim.
podcast is presented by authority of the Nationals Baseball Club, the Washington Nationals Baseball Club, and may not be reproduced or retransmitted in any form. The accounts and descriptions of this game may not be disseminated without the express written consent of the Washington Nationals. Binger, Oklahoma's Johnny Bench. Best ever. Offense and defense, a lot of people think with that combo. Kyle Finnegan, yesterday, foul out, walk, strike out, ground out, a 16 pitch ninth inning for his first save of the year. And he gets Nick Martini here. Just stay with the heaters against Nick Martini. He showed that he could hit anything off speed. Fastball in the split. Occasional slider from Cal Finnegan. Martini one for two, a walk and a single today. That's under his hands for a strike. So right side, defense short up. Nassim Nunez, the youngster, the rule five pickup. Bob, do you throw the tilde over the end on your scorebook? For Nunez? You know, I should. I'm sweet. One and two. Just wrote it. You just did. You just so everybody did. can see it if they check out the post game post. How about not throwing opening day for Hunter Harvey and Kyle Finnegan? Then you get the off day, and then you're like, come on, I want to throw. Two days in a row. Here you go. Out of play. The last inning for Hunter Harvey, just fantastic. Leadoff double. It just finds a way. Going strikes with the split, getting there. Pass the baton off to Kyle Finnegan. Finnegan throws a strike. And the Nats have a guy there. It's Lane Thomas. That ball had another gear. One out here in the ninth. 105 off the bat. Only 474 RPM on that. So that knuckle that you saw from Lane Thomas. Wow. Loud out. That's a scary feeling for an outfielder. It's coming right at you. And all of a sudden it changes directions at high velo. Here's the catcher. Luke Maley, opposite field homer here yesterday. And we got a guy there too. That's a fair ball when caught. Two down. No, Luke Maley yesterday. He was on everything. Top of the order, Jonathan India. Throwing strikes, defense on its toes. India career against Finnegan. 0 for 2 with a walk. Yeah, Carrot's going to use one of his mouth visits on this. It was getting late. They're having trouble getting the pitch calm and the right sign going down. So, good job. Good heads up play by Kipper Ruiz. Call time. Get out there. Don't get a pitch violation. And Kyle has never been the quickest getting into his motion. I thought he handled last year very well. Beyond, beyond better than I think any of us thought. Just because it's a, a big change for certain guys. Yeah. Even things up. That's last year. 18 pitcher timer violations, which ranked them number 27. The White Sox did not have one with everything that went on last year with what, them, Mark Burley still pitching. Right. You're going at least <laughs> one. They didn't have one. That's amazing. One one. I remember Mike Rizzo and I watching the spring training game last year. He said, oh, yeah, Finn, he's going to be a buzzer beater. And he handled it quite well. Yes, he did. Oh, 
up and away you sure don't want to walk them into the tying run in the box here. He had seven last year. Leader in the clubhouse was Craig Kimbrell, 13. Hmm. Finnegan pumps a strike and a check swing. Full count. Just on the elevation right there, the fastball, the check swing. I would, I mean, I would stay up there, but he set himself up if he wants to go back to his split. Changing eye levels. Nice. Three two again. Eighth pitch of the at bat. A lot of four seamers haven't seen the split in a while. Till now. Tapper. Oh, Nats need this to go foul. Blow on it. Need no it foul. to go foul, and it does. Just enough sideways spin. Who was that back at the day that got down? He had the knees and started blowing on the ball, trying to get it to go foul <laughs> on the turf. I think it was in Kansas City. Oh, man. Full count again. Just keep firing those fastballs ahead. Ballpark falls silent. Not for long. India is going to hook a double into the left field corner. That's a great at bat by him. Tip your cap to the other guy on that plate appearance. Absolutely, especially where this pitch was down and in. Corner of the plate. He does a great job to keep it fair. That's usually one you see. Guy hooked down the line. Yesterday, he was batting ninth. Will Benson struck out swinging against Cal Finnegan for the second out of the ninth inning. One for two career with a double. And a high drive deep left center. This game is tied. Benson's third hit of the day, and it's his third on something off speed. Two curveballs that hung in the zone for his double and single earlier, and this is a split that just stays all over the top part of the plate. On a tee. I personally think is all about Jonathan India and the lengthy at bat that he had that just kept that thing going and just spoiling pitch after pitch and then winning the at bat passing along to Will Benson. Yeah oh, absolutely. An absolute shocker for the Nats here. Now Finnegan's got to get Encarnacion strand. He will not and this game is over.
Trying to match up that 0-1 split that he started him out with. And again, just like the one from Will Benson, this split stays middle of the plate, 113 miles an hour off the bat of Christian Encarnacion Strand. Who was 0 for 12 coming into that at bat. As he threw it, he knew it. Mm. Well, the Nats within one pitch against Jonathan India of winning the ball game and the series. India had an amazing at bat. Benson deep and Carnacion strand deep. And Dan, an absolute crusher. That takes a weekend when the Nationals played so well and appeared to be heading home two and one into a one and two shocking series loss. Certainly didn't see this coming, Bob, not with Kyle Finnegan, who was so great for so much of last season. Just a pitch away from sending the Nationals home to D.C. with a series win. Instead, the Reds storm back and win this one in walk off fashion. Coming up on Nats Extra Post Game, we'll show you the good. There was plenty of it today, including Trey Lipscomb's first big league home run, but we'll show you the bad as well. The Reds back to back home runs in the ninth inning. Two run shot tied it, the solo shot won it, and we'll get Davey Martinez's post game thoughts. After a tough one, the Reds score three in the ninth and come back to win it by a score of six to five. Home opener is tomorrow, but we've got Nats extra post game to recap this one next.